In this video, I'm going to talk about the basics of images in HTML. So people say that a picture is worth a thousand words, and generally it's a great idea from a design and user experience perspective to incorporate images into your website. So we can do an image in HTML with open angle bracket, IMG. Then we specify the image source attribute with SRC is equal to, and we'll put the path to the image in quotes there. And then we just do a close angle bracket, and there is no closing tag in the case of images. Now I'm gonna load in this newyork.jpg image here that is actually on the desktop in the same directory as this img.html document that I'm manipulating now. And because it's right in the same directory, I can actually just say here, newyork.jpg, save it, do a refresh, and we'll get the image displayed on our website here. Now there's some attributes I should tell you about with image tags in HTML. Height and width are two attributes that let you manipulate the height and width of the image. So if I were to specify here and say height is equal to 400, width is equal to 400, that's going to give the image a 400 pixel height and a 400 pixel width, which we can see when we load it up here. Now, if you're man manipulating the image height and width with these properties, one thing to keep in mind is that the aspect ratio of the image will not be respected if you were to mess these up and, and change it to be something different than the aspect ratio of the image. So this is a square image, but if I said width of 800, height of 400, and do a refresh here, you'll see that the image gets warped and stretched if we do it like that. Now, if we only include one of these properties, like let's just say we only include the height, it'll actually respect the aspect ratio for you, which is just good to know. Now. Another attribute that's very important with images is the alt attribute. Now the alt attribute is spe for specifying the alternative text of the image. And this is the text that will be displayed if the image can't be loaded, maybe because the network connection is bad or because the source attribute is incorrect. So right now, if I were to have say an incorrect source attribute and do a refresh here, the image won't be loaded. You get sort of error image by the browser instead. But if I were to specify the alt text here and say alt is equal to, and say New York City, and then do a refresh, what'll happen is it'll display that alternative text instead. And that's good because, you know, if the internet connection is down or, or whatever, then the reader of the website knows what should have been there. Now, why alternative text attributes are very important to include is actually accessibility. Because say in the case of people with visual impairments, they rely often on screen readers to help them consume websites. And these screen readers will use the alternative text attribute contents to tell them what the image content is there. And people actually use programs called validators to ensure that the HTML for website is accessible. And if you don't include alt text with your images, they actually won't pass validation. So it's very important to include the alt attribute in all of your images. Now, one thing you can do with images as well is you can put them into relative folders. So if I were to say make a folder here, cities, and then put the New York image inside of it, what I can do is I can then give a relative URL here. So I can say cities slash New York dot JPG. And then if I were to reload this page here, we can reach the image with that relative path as well. Another thing we can do with images is we can use the source attribute to specify an image located at an absolute URL located on an external website. So this image here of Chicago is located on this wikimedia.org website. And if I were to copy this image source here and paste it in here, now I've got this big long URL as my source attribute. And I probably want to change this to be Chicago now too. But this will work. This will actually display this image that's found on this external server on our website. So if I do refresh here, we get this image of Chicago now. So there's more you can do with images using properties in CSS. And I'll talk about that in a future video on CSS and images. But I just want to talk about the basics of images in this video. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.